Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a Physics 7b fluid transport practice problem. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe, it really helps a lot. So this problem is the uh, carbonate escape, so let's just go ahead and read it. Please make sure to pause in order to copy the instructions. So we have uh, uh, Leah is trying to free Han Solo from his carbonite prison, so she's experimenting with the fluid carbonite in the fluid circuit below. She knows that for both of the following situations that we're going to analyze, the cross-sectional area at point A is 4 meters uh, squared, the velocity at point A is 2 meters per second, cross-sectional area at point C is 0 0.5 meters squared, and the pressure at point A is 800 pascals. The density of carbonate is equal to 5 kilograms per meter cube, and you can assume that the fluid is incompressible and in a steady state for both of the following situations. So let's just go ahead and read part A. Um, so Leia thinks this, um, she first think about what would happen to the fluid circuit if she adds a bump at a position B, which is in the middle, which would add 500 uh, joules per meter cube of energy density to the system. There is no resistance in this situation. What would be the velocity of the fluid at point C and what would be the pressure at point C in this situation? So as you can see, I have everything written down here in my notes. Um, so this is the carbonate escape. And then for part A, we are basically adding a pump here in the middle, over here, between points A and C. And the first thing that we have to figure out is what is the velocity at point C? All right, well, we do have um, an area and a velocity at this point, and we have an area at this point over here. So I think that the easiest way to solve for this velocity is actually to just use continuity. What comes in has to go out. This basically means that um, what goes in has to come out. And in terms of using our definition of area times velocity, this means area 1, velocity 1, uh, well, A, I'm sorry, this is point A, is equal to area C, velocity at C. Uh, we know this tree and we want to solve for this, so BC is equal to area A, velocity A, divided by area at C. So this is equal to, let's say, 4 times 2 divided by 0 0.5 and this is 8 times 2 this is equal to 16 meters per second final answer now part a is also asking us why would the uh, pressure at point c be in this situation so what is pressure at c with the pump over here so obviously if we want a pressure, we have to jump into the Bernoulli equation. There really is no shortcut, so let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm gonna start with the entire equation. So this is the entire Bernoulli equation, and now we have to figure out what terms are gonna um, survive over here. Uh, this term is going to go away because we don't really have a change in height. This term is going to stay because we do have a change in area, which means a change in velocity it goes from 2 to 16. Uh, we do have a pump over here and we know that it adds 500 uh, joules per meter cube and this problem says that there is no resistance, at least for part A. So let's just go ahead and um, solve for that. So this is delta P uh, is equal to E pump divided by volume minus one half rho delta V squared. Uh, this delta P is final minus initial, so it's P uh, pressure at C minus pressure at A. And if I send pressure at A to the other side of the equation, it goes as a positive. So let's just write that down like this. Yeah, final minus initial, and then it goes out to the other side, so it ends up as a positive. 
So let's just put numbers on a calculator. This is 500 minus one half uh, density is equal to five. And then this V squared is final minus initial. So it's 16 squared minus two squared plus, uh, what's the pressure at eight, 800. So pressure at C is equal to, let's see, uh, 500 minus one half times five times 16 uh, squared minus two squared plus 800. That is equal to 670 Pascal's final answer. All right, so now we're gonna move on to part B of this problem. So part B reads as follows. Uh, this girl then thinks about what would happen to the fluid circuit if there were no pump, so now there's no pump. And she scuff off the inside so that the pipe would have a total resistance of 20 joules second uh, divided by meters to the six. So what would the flow rate of the original fluid at point C be in this situation? And what would be the pressure at point C in this situation? Okay, so now there is no pump, but we do have a resistance all over the pipe. Um, so let's just go ahead and figure this out. Well, the velocity at point C is actually not going to change because the way in which we got the velocity was by using continuity which was just by using area A, velocity A, area C, velocity C, and the area and this velocity are not really changing. This area also didn't change, so our velocity at C, it's still 16 meters per second, which is actually very helpful because just by going back to the definition of flow, flow is equal to area times velocity, so flow at C, which is what they're asking, is just area C, velocity C. And if I just put numbers to that, then that is equal to 0 0.5 times 16. So my flow at C is just going to be equal to 8 um, meters cube divided by second. This is kind of a tricky question because they are changing a lot, except that the things that matter in order to get the velocity didn't change. So the velocity stays the same and this part of the problem ends up being actually very easy. It's just multiplying stuff that you already have. But now let's just move on. And uh, part two is what is the pressure at C in this situation? And now the pressure at C obviously is not gonna be the same number. It's not gonna be 670. Uh, because when we used our Bernoulli equation, we had a pump, uh, we didn't have a resistance, so things are going to change and, you know, it's our job to see how they're going to change. So going back to the Bernoulli equation, let me just write that down. The new Bernoulli equation is delta P. This term um, still doesn't really show up on the Bernoulli equation. This term is still going to show up. In fact, it's gonna be the exact same number because the velocities didn't change. Uh, now we don't have a pump, so this term actually goes away, but we do have a resistance, so this is negative IR. So solving for PC out of here, this is just PC is equal to, this goes to the other side, negative IR, negative um, one half, rho del v squared plus b a so this is um the current oh we have it over here so that's useful so this is negative i r negative one half five sixteen squared minus two squared plus eight hundred so let's just go ahead and do that um, negative 8 times 20, oh, 20 over here, minus 1 half times 5 times 16 squared minus 2 squared, 
uh, plus 800 and that is equal to 10 pascals. There we go. So as you can see, you know, it is a very common misconception and I think that that is what this problem was trying to address. There is this very common misconception that if you add a resistance to a pipe, that is gonna change the velocity. Just the same as there is a misconception that if you add a bump to a pipe, that will increase the velocity going from here to here. And that is not the case. And I think that what this problem is trying to show us is that um, adding a pump or adding a resistance is not going to change the velocity. What's going to be changing really is the pressure difference. Um, that is what adding a pump and adding a resistance is going to do to your system. So the pressure did change, but the velocity stayed the same. Uh, the only indicator that we have for velocity is area. And because the areas stayed the same, the velocity stayed the same. So I hope that um, that is what you're taking from this problem. It's kind of an easy practice problem, but I think that it really strikes some very, very common mistakes that students usually make. Uh, it really addresses those misconceptions that you know show up at the beginning when students are learning about you know fluid transport and the Bernoulli equation and what um, affects what. So I really hope that this video was useful. Uh, if you have any comments, please make sure to leave them in the bottom of this video. We do read them and we do appreciate your feedback. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.